Hello, fellow super duper scientists. B here. Welcome to our first lesson together where you will learn to think like a scientist. Have you ever wondered what makes a scientist a scientist? Is it their stylish attire? Perhaps it's all the high tech gadgets they use? Or maybe it's their dynamic dance moves? While it is true that scientists have fabulous fashion sense, can boogie down, and use exciting instruments like microscopes and seismometers, that's not what makes them scientists. Well, then what is it, B? Here's a hint. If you've been thinking carefully and trying to figure out what it is, you're already on the right track. But you're gonna have to stick around to find out because in today's lesson, we'll explore how scientists think and begin to understand how scientific thinking leads to knowledge about the natural world. Welcome back! So, think you know what makes a scientist a scientist? Okay, okay, I won't make you wait any longer. Or will I? <laughs> that never gets old. Okay, what makes a scientist a scientist is... How they think! Just like you and me, scientists are naturally curious people who use their five senses to ask questions, investigate problems, and communicate their knowledge with others. Although you may not know it, you use your five senses, sight, sound, smell, taste, and touch to think like a scientist every day. It's true! Every day, questions come up, and you try to answer them. Think about it. Did something happen today that you didn't understand and wanted to know more about? Maybe it was a challenging math question. Perhaps you wanted to know what the weather would be so that you could decide what to wear. Using your senses to ask and answer questions is what scientific thinking is all about. When scientists use one or more of their five senses to collect data, they are making observations. Anytime you hear a dog bark, <laughs> smell smoke, or decide whether it is safe to cross the road, you're making observations too. But scientific observation isn't the same as just seeing, hearing, smelling, touching, or tasting things. We've been doing those things all our lives, but they don't make us scientists any more than befriending a ladybug makes us entomologists. Scientists that specialize in studying insects. Scientific observations must be accurate and backed by evidence, which means scientists can't make up information to help solve a problem. Fortunately, scientists can use special tools to enhance their senses. Instruments like microscopes, thermometers, and sonar help scientists make more detailed observations than they can with their senses alone. For example, microscopes allow geologists, scientists who study the Earth's history through rocks, to view the bright colors and various shapes of minerals within large rock formations. Geologists might miss these important details if they were to observe rocks with just their eyes alone. By now, you know that observations are an excellent way to learn something new and expand your knowledge. But that's really only one component of thinking like a scientist. Scientists, no matter what field they work in, follow a series of six logical steps called the scientific method to guide their thinking. Now, I know what you're thinking. You're thinking, B, you're telling me that scientists don't actually walk around with a head full of crazy complicated equations to help them understand our world? And to that I say, eh, kind of, and ish. Let's be honest, 
Of course, scientists need the background knowledge they gain in school and through field experience to be successful, but that's not all they need. They need the scientific method. Now, those two words might sound scary and super scientific, but I assure you, the scientific method is an entirely logical and easy to use tool that is the foundation for all great scientific investigation. We'll conduct an in-depth exploration of the scientific method in the lesson of the same name. But for now, take my word for it. Once you start using the scientific method in your studies, it will become second nature. In fact, many aspects of scientific thinking are simply extensions of how you think every day. For example, have you ever prepared a delicious dish without following a recipe? If so, chances are you tasted the meal and adjusted the recipe throughout the preparation process, such as adding a dash of salt there or a squeeze of lemon here until the taste of the dish was just right. We interrupt this lesson to bring you breaking news. By tasting your dish and adjusting the recipe, you were adapting to changing circumstances and using the scientific method in the same way a scientist uses it to gain a deeper understanding of the natural world. Back to you in the studio, B. Thank you, Justin. And thanks to scientific thinking, the sum of human knowledge has grown tremendously. From studying animal behavior, to tracking gravitational waves from a neutron star. Scientists gain accurate and reliable knowledge by thinking critically and applying the steps of the scientific method. And with a bit of background knowledge and thinking like a scientist, you can become one too. Well, that's our lesson for today. If you were following along, you now know that one, scientists use their five senses to collect data and make observations. Two, scientific observations must be accurate and backed by evidence. Three, scientists follow a series of steps called the scientific method to guide their thinking. Four, you can be a scientist by thinking like a scientist. Hey, don't forget to check out the engaging games and thought-provoking resources related to this lesson to prepare for our next lesson, where we'll explore science in action. And remember, in Earth science, as in life, you rock! See you next time! Hey, hey.